particularly with very entangled symbiotic relationships, the separation between the organisms that make up that relationship blurs and eventually you're talking about a singular organism. I suppose a simple example would be lichen. You have algae and fungi and they form a symbiotic relationship and at least structurally the product of that relationship is more complex than either produce individually. That's something that happened in our distant past we formed this relationship with the reproductive organs of the plant kingdom and it was a, an increasingly entangled very deep relationship and neurochemical fuel wasn't actually coming from our own mammalian genome it simply doesn't produce all that much complexity it was actually coming from the combined plant genomes so I'd kind of go as far as saying the emergence of a neocortex, the really unique element of our consciousness system, wasn't the product of our own mammalian DNA. It was the product of this symbiotic relationship, this symbiotic association with the really essential materials coming from the plant genome. So it, it opens it all to kind of effectively saying our neocortex is, in the way we currently describe it, a plant-animal hybrid. And the traits, the perceptual traits that that gave us is really more to do with the plant genome, the plant biochemistry, so really our perception, our consciousness is the product of this union and really more to do with the forest, so hence the allusion to the forest becoming more conscious, more self-aware by effectively kidnapping a basic mammalian neural system and re-engineering it at a genetic level and building something spectacularly complex and again something that mammalian genomes almost never build. Your typical mammalian genome will build a very effective survival system, a, a neural system that's very good at survival. Rapid cycling, rapid reproduction, short juvenile period, it's typically hierarchical, aggressive, it, it's effective in terms of survival but tends to lack unusual degrees of cognitive function, displays of self-awareness and traits like empathy and compassion etc. The kind of traits we normally like to associate with being human. The mammalian genome doesn't typically build those kind of things and in fact when the human genome was being deciphered in the human genome project I think there was a lot of expectation that some very unusual coding would be found there, some very unusual information in the blueprint to explain our unusual traits but actually the result was it was nothing more than a fairly typical mammalian genome so this lends support to the idea that to design and build these unique traits took something more than a mammalian genome, which might be an unusual idea, except for the fact that we already know an awful lot about our distant past. And one of the things that stands out in our distant past is this symbiotic relationship with the highly evolved sex organs of the flowering plants. Loads of biochemistry, a lot of it incredibly hormonally active. So it's not a great leap to put these anomalies together and say, well, look, is there an explanation here? And the biochemistry seems to stack up. It seems to make a lot of sense.